Hi everyone! This video is for those entrepreneurs who have nail business idea in mind. In this video we will be covering inputs which affect financial efficiency of this type of business. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel. You can download this model using the link in the description of this video. Also, you can order financial models from scratch for your unique business ideas. We can help you with that. First of all, let's create a rule that all our inputs in our model will be marked with unique color, blue. All other cells will contain formulas. This will ease future scenario modeling, which we will do many steps ahead. Marking inputs will help us or our business partners or bankers or any other third parties find and play with inputs easily, creating a huge amount of scenarios. Playing with inputs will give the answers to simple but very important questions. How much money is needed? When financing is needed? What is the structure of financing? What is the profit? What is the profitability? What is the payback period? And many, many other. Then, we need to create a revenue generating algorithm that we will trust. This will be our first block of inputs. We are starting with naming of all our nail services. Then we are setting up the price per nail service. It is very important for future scenario analysis to be able to switch on and off different services from calculations. This will show us the stability of our business idea. If we are too optimistic with this or that service, we can switch it off and see how the cash flow will look without it. What will be the revenue? What will be the profit? What will be the payback period? We will be able to get the answers very quickly for this simple but very difficult to answer questions. Also, for scenario analysis, we are adding this coefficient to the pricing strategy as well. For example, we don't want to switch off this or that nail service completely from the model, but we just want to decrease the value of its price on 20%. Here we can just type 80% and this will give us 80% of base price for this service. Then we are setting up the percentage of direct cost from the prices for each nail service. We also add direct cost coefficient for scenario analysis. All this stuff will be in use while we will be building a huge amount of scenarios when our model will be ready and we will be testing the stability of cash flow of our business idea. The next very important parameter of inputs is nail service duration. This is non-financial parameter but it significantly affects the revenues indirectly. Here we specify the duration in minutes for every service and adding additional coefficient which will be needed during scenario modeling. Then we are moving to the sales plan. It is very important to make our model detailed. High level of details makes us confident about the revenue values, expense values. If model is detailed enough, we become confident about financing needed of our business idea, we are confident looking at cash flow statement, at the end we are confident when we see simple and discounted payback period diagrams, internal rate of return values and so on and so on. The next block of inputs illustrate us typical week from left to right. 
and the list of nail services from top to the bottom. Here we can specify the amount of different nail services provided by our nail studio with seasonality inside the typical week. Looking at your typical week will allow you look at your business idea a different way, realistic way. All days inside typical week are different from the revenues perspective. When you start specifying the amount of services looking at a specific day, Monday or Friday or any other day, you will be bearing in mind what kind of day it is. Let's say what type of day it is. If it is Monday, you can't put too many services for example. Or if it is Sunday, you can't put any services because Neil Studio is closed, for example. This is very important because when you will be putting values inside the sales plan for nail services, you will be thinking if this amount of nail services is realistic or not for this or that day of the week. Later, this will make you feel confident about the revenue values which you will see inside the cash flow statement. Here we have two groups of coefficients. In this line we have a typical week sales plan coefficient which will help us to add some more additional seasonality to typical week revenues modeling. Also we are adding specific sales plan coefficients individually to each nail service. Here they are. Now we are moving to the nail studio working hours. In this block of inputs we set up the amount of working hours for each day inside the typical week. Next table is very important. It makes us feel confident about the revenues of our business idea. Here we can see the total amount of hours needed daily for the amount of nail services that we set up in our sales plan. In this particular case we can see that our nail salon works less amount of hours than the sales plan needs. This means we need to decrease the amount of services to get the realistic amount of hours occupied by the services. Also, we can adjust the specific day amount of services to get realistic hours. This will bring our project to realistic values. If this value is too big for Monday, we can also decrease the sales plan here. Our project may not only have some typical week seasonality, but may also have typical year seasonality. You may have some decrease in revenues in summer months and increase in winter, for example. We can set up this seasonality in percentage format here. Then we need to specify the first month and year when we get the first revenues. Now we need to move to the next and very important block of inputs. When you start any new project, in most cases you won't be able to reach target revenues right from the first month of operating activity. This means you may face some operating losses during the time period while you will be reaching the break-even point. You need to be very attentive when calculating these losses because they may have surprisingly big numbers. So here in this block of inputs you can specify the percentage value of actual revenues out of target revenues. Then you can go directly to the cash flow statement and look at the amount of operating losses. Here they are. So you can play with these percentages and see the amount of operating losses if your project reaches the target revenues faster or slower. Of course, operating losses will affect the total amount of financing needed for the project. Now let's move to the payroll block. In this small block of inputs you can name the positions, salaries per person on each position and the amount of people on each position. Also if you have some bonus pay as a percentage from revenues you can specify it here. Now we are moving to fixed costs such as rent, office expenses, maybe advertising. In this block of inputs we can name all these costs here and set up their monthly values as well. The next step of inputs is investment plan. That's very simple. 
Here we specify what we are investing in. What is the price per unit of what we are investing in and how many units we need to purchase for our project during the investment stage. Because it is a small business project, we are assuming that the duration of, an, of investment stage will be just one month. Now it is time for us to set up how many working places we have in our nail salon. Then we are moving to the block of inputs that is very important for scenario analysis and stress tests. Here we are adding global coefficients to revenues, direct expenses, payroll, fixed costs and investment plan. By default all values are equal to 100%. But we can increase the revenues by 10% putting 110% value here. Or we can decrease fixed cost by 20% putting here 80%. That's how it works. Here we can play very quickly with our project. We can see how stable its profits, payback period and so on. We may also need to add a loan to our project. Let's look at it. First of all, we specify the amount of loan. Term of loan, then interest rate, then when we get this loan, year and month, and finally we set up the grace periods, if we have any, for interest payments or principal payments. Then we specify the tax rates. Here we have four taxes. Revenue, payroll, profit and asset tax. Let's assume that asset tax will have some monthly value. Other three taxes will have percentage value from their tax base. Finally, our model moves to the cash flow statement. Cash flow consists of three parts – operating activity, investment activity and financing activity. Operating activity shows us the breadth of your business idea without bank loans. Investment activity shows us how much money you spend and on what before the project starts generating the first revenues. Financing activity shows us inflows and outflows from different pockets like equity and loans that you will be using to finance investment plan expenses and operating losses. Cash flow is one of the most important tables of your business plan. Here we can see the structure of revenues, direct costs, payroll, fixed costs, taxes, investment plan, loan, and equity and debt payments and so on. The result from operating activity shows us the performance of our business idea without external loan burden. Cash balance at the end of the period shows us the cash generated by our project by this or that given moment inside the timeline. Then we calculate the amount of different types of financing needed for our business idea. 
Now we are moving to internal rate of return tab. In this cell we specify the level of discount rate. Here we have two more parameters. One of them is a discount rate count. The second parameter is a starting discount rate value. Then we move to the next tab. This tab is very important. This is a stress testing environment. Once we've created some scenario, we need to know how stable it is. What will happen with this scenario if revenues decrease or expenses rise? In this block of financial model, we can easily test it. Here we have our scenario output financials. This cell is a coefficient that we will be adding to any revenue or expense input inside our project. Here we have another input. This is a step of change of parameter that we will be looking at during our sensitivity analysis. If we change this parameter, this will affect this line. Column with 100 value is a current scenario financials. Columns to the left are project financials if the value of the project input that we are looking at will decrease. Columns to the right are financials if parameter increase. In this simple table we can see when our business model becomes less interesting when this or that parameter of inputs will grow or decrease. Now let's add this parameter to the pricing. Now let's press Sense button. Now we can easily remove sensitivity analysis parameter from here and add it to another input, for example, direct costs. We can also add sensitivity analysis parameter to any input inside our model. 
Let's add it to the payroll, for example. So now we can create a huge amount of scenarios and test them from this or that perspective. This will be very interesting for the future business owner and will tell him a lot about his business idea. So thanks for watching, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. You can download this model using the link in the description of this video. We can also create financial models from scratch for your unique business ideas. So see you in next videos, thank you and bye.